Regarding the switches, and uh, to be more accurate, the RIA switches, because it's different than uh, RIJ. RIJ is another series of enterprise switches. So our scope on, on this RIA switches is a small mid business, SMB business. We have two categories, the ES series and the NBS series. Okay. Um, for the ES series, we have unmanaged switches, cloud managed switches, layer two smart gigabit switches, and layer two plus smart uh, gigabit switches. Most of them are gigabit switches. For the ES, uh, usually it uses to connect uh, terminals to access switches. So we have our core switch. And uh, this is the core layer. We are very far away from this in the RIA series. And then the distribution layer, the distribution layer, and then the access layer. And this access layer is connected to our endpoints, which is our laptops, our computers, and even our access points, and maybe some IP telephony. Okay, and some CCTVs. So mainly ES is as access switches. Uh, compared to the ES series, the MBS series is a little bit higher relative performance and supports more functions. Uh, the main function uh, difference between MBS and ES as follows. For the type, the ES is layer two switch, the MBS is layer two and layer two plus. And we talk about layer two plus, we talking about more a little bit features than layer two. You can do static routing, you can do rep, and that's it. For the STB, spanning tree protocol, and rapid spanning tree protocol, the ES series unfortunately doesn't support, but the MBS series supports. Spanning tree and rabbit spanning tree. For the LASP, the link aggregation, they are both not support. But at the other side, the static aggregation is supported by the NBS and it's not supported by the ES. Uh, the IGMP snooping for multicast traffic, it's not supported by the ES, but it is supported by the NBS. For the web-based management, they are both supported, okay? For the access control lists, the ES is not supported and the MBS is supported. The max VLAN you can create on the ES, 16, uh, and the max VLAN on the MBS, 1094. Um, <clears throat> for the PUE, the PUE plus, it supports for the ES up to 30 watt, up to 30 watt. But for the ES 216 GC and 224 GC, not supported. Only for those two models, it's not supported the 30 watt POE. Okay. But at the other side, MBS is supported. Regarding the high power over Ethernet, which reaches 60 watt. The, MB, the MBS is supported as well, but the ES is not supported. Um, okay. For the, uh, the configuration of MBS, you log in to manage the MBS uh, switch through the master, e.g., like we have explained yesterday. Thanks for the sum. So you can manage the MBS switch through the master router, which is EG router in the SOM network. So simply you open the 192.168.110.1 and you can manage your uh, EG and the MBS as well. If you click here, you can manage the MBS. Let me maximize this. 
so it will be more clear. Okay. Is there any questions? No, it doesn't support uh, LASP, but on the other side, it supports static aggregation. It supports static aggregation. If you want to go with the LASP, you can go with the RJ, uh, RJ products. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is our master, uh, for example, AG105. GW, this is our master uh, router. And when you log into your master router, you can manage the MBS as well. If you just click your manage here, you can manage the MBS. Um, you connect the switch with your PC, with the UTP, simply with the UTP from the lamp. And uh, I think there is a noise in the background. So is there someone is talking on the, on the mic? Let me tick. Okay, everything is good. Okay. Um, well, static aggregation, it, it, you are telling the other end that I am on. I am on for aggregation. But the last, you are, agree, you are agree, both, both ends agree on a protocol, which is LASP. So... RIA supports static aggregation, and that is enough for the for the MBS series. But if you want LASP, you will go with the VJ uh, series. Okay. Um, if you want to connect directly to your MBS, you can connect the MBS to your. Can you please mute the mic, Mr. Kelvin? Um. You would go with 104477 uh, 0 24 network uh, 104477 uh, 0 and this is the, the IP which uh, gives you login to the MBS. So simply, this is your PC regarding the TCP IP. Your IP will be 104477, for example, 5. The mask is slash 24, which is 255, 255, 255, uh, zero. And the gateway it should be any number, but I would prefer 1044, 77, one. And don't use this address on your TCP IP configuration. So once you are connected to the MBS, you can simply log into the device with that IP address, okay? Here's the interface of the NBS 3100, for example. Um, you can check here the basic info. This is the host name, the model number. It is online. Its status is online. And the management IP of this MPS is 192.168.110.8 because the master, which could be AG, is managing this NBS. So this AG obtains the default IP, which is 192.168.110.1. And as long as they are both on the same network segment, so the switch can obtain the eight or the any number. So you can manage that switch individually or through the master itself. Um, as you can see here, the port info, it shows you that we are currently connected on port 13. And the flow data will be updated every five minutes and you can refresh it manually. Okay, this is the IP address, uh, serial number, the MAC address, and the host name, which is MBS3100. This is the menu, if you want to configure VLAN, if you want to do some monitoring of your ports, if you do want to check the PoE and the PoE budget, if you want to do IGMP multicast for IPTV scenarios, for IPTV scenarios, uh, some security, including uh, port isolation, port isolation, and some advanced feature diagnostics and the system management. We'll go through that. 
those are the port infos and for example we are connected to uh, gig 3 for example and gig 13 sorry and it, it shows you the rx and tx speed the received and transmit speed in kilobit per second the received and transmit bytes and packets and if there is crc errors in the packet itself if it's corrupted oversized packet and if there is a conflict if there is a conflict on some ports it will be shown here um, from the port menu you can check the basic settings like the config status like the actual status like uh, the flow control the duplex is it half duplex is it full duplex you can check the aggregated port if you want to do some aggregation up to eight aggregation groups you can check the port mirroring for some analysis if you want to use uh, some analysis for port mirroring if you want to trace out the wireshark output you can uh, select the port mirroring you can even uh, limit the rate of the port here if you want to check the power over ethernet and the management ip um, well you can even edit the port itself if you want to edit the the, the config speed and the flow control or you can patch patching the edit to all your ports patch edit to all your ports if you want to set uh, for example the, the 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 duplex is half duplex for some scenarios or for some certain ports you can check it for full duplex full duplex and even the flow control if you want to configure the flow control i do recommend that you turn this on for the flow control okay um here port gig 2 status is enabled the rate is auto you can adjust the rate to 10 kilo 100 even 1 meg because the port is one gig bit per second. The duplex mode, you can select your duplex mode and you can turn on or turn off the flow control of certain ports. Uh, the power over ethernet, that technique that turns on your end devices that supports power over ethernet. Um, simply, the name of a number of methods that allow for powering network devices, such as IP telephony and uh, CCTVs, uh, maybe some access points, according to the power budget of the port, through unshielded twisted pair or even fiber twisted pair. This way, is it possible to power devices such as cameras, phones, switches, access points? The maximum transmission distance is 100 meter. Okay. The maximum transmission distance between the switch itself and the end device, whether it's CCTV, whether it's IP telephony, the maximum is 100. And as per the life experience, real life scenario, I never exceed 80 meters for better PoE uh, transmission. NBS series switches support long distance PoE. The transmission distance is 250 meter. You can extend up to 250 meter power supply, but please notice that 250 meter power supply does change the port rate to 10 megabit per second. But at the same time, it uses the eight core intelligent power supply technology. Uh, if you want to go with 250 meter, um, you forgot about high definition or ultra high definition. If you are uh, using it for CCTV, it will be just normal CCTV, no high definition or ultra high definition if you are going to extend for up to 250 meter. Um, 
Regarding the VLAN application scenario, please feel free if you have any question. I can check the, 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 the chat many times, but feel free to take the mic if you have any question. Okay, let's continue. Regarding the VLAN, the VLAN configuration, um, the fifth and sixth floor of a company building have offices for technical departments and the financial department. This is our scenario. The customers require that departments can communicate with each other, but the departments are required to be isolated from each other on the second floor. To meet this requirement, it's necessary to use VLAN division. Well, VLAN means single broadcast domain. Single broadcast domain. So VLAN 2 cannot talk to VLAN 3, and VLAN 3 cannot talk to VLAN 4. It's completely isolated network. In order for those VLAN to communicate with each other, there are two ways. The first way is implementing layer 3 switches and router on stick, router on stick, that can let you let different VLAN to communicate with each other. Here we have layer 2 switch. And we have another layer two switch. We have three layer two switches. The technology department is in VLAN 10 and the finance department is in VLAN 20. And the technology department for this switch can talk to technology department on that switch while considering this is access port, access port, and those ports are trunk, are trunk. Why trunk? Because this port or this link will pass VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. So if there's someone here wants to talk to someone here, this port is actually access port. When it goes here, it will ask the switch, am I allowed? to go through that switch and then go through that switch and talk to my other colleague in other department. If this is trunk port, which means by trunk, it means that it passes the VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. You can decide which VLAN you can pass on that trunk link. And that trunk link is negotiated with that switch. And that switch knows that this is as well a trunk link which allows VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 as well. So VLAN in technology departments, which is VLAN X, for example, can talk on VLAN to that department. Thanks for the trunk port and access port. I think uh, most of us are familiar with the VLAN uh, technology. We use this daily. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. So far, uh, for what device it is, difference only for the MPS models. Yes, it can support 802.3 AEF AET, but that for the MBS series. Thank you, Kelvin, for the answers. Okay, uh, the purpose of VLAN is segmentation. You are segmenting your environment. So if you have environment like this environment and you have different floors, it's exactly you are segmenting your network. So the purpose of the VLAN is mainly the segmentation, dividing the LAN to virtual LANs. So it controls the profiltration of unnecessary broadcasts thereby improving network bandwidth utilization and reducing resource waste. And it divides different user groups and restrict access between groups to increase security. So people in VLAN 2 cannot talk with people in VLAN 3 unless there is routing between those VLAN. So Users on VLAN 2 can talk to VLAN 3 if you allow the routing between those VLAN. 
the virtual local area network, one physical switch can be configured as multiple logical switch. Each logical switch is connected to local area network called VLAN, virtual LAN. Each virtual LAN, like we mentioned, is a broadcast domain, and VLANs can isolate isolate broadcasts and reduce broadcast domain. The VLAN features is logic-based grouping. You are not physically grouping the, 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 the users, but it's uh, logic, which can be grouped by business or function, not limited by physical location, more flexible networking. So whether you are on the fifth floor, the sixth floor, the third floor, you can segment your network. And thanks for the VLAN. Users in different VLANs need to use layer three devices to communicate. Um, next is VLAN standards. And like we mentioned, in order to carry the data frames of multiple VLANs on an interconnecting cable a way to distinguish data frames of different vlan is trunk ports and access port the switch uses vlan tags to distinguish ethernet frames of different vlans so if we have that switch here and let's say that my pc in vlan 5 and this switch on floor 5 And my colleague in the other department or in the same department, he's in floor six, let's say, and he is in VLAN five as well. So what happened is this is access port. This is access port and this is trunk port. So when the frame comes here or the data comes here, there is a tag that we put to the frame to identify that this frame is tagged with VLAN 5. So when it reaches this switch, this switch knows that if you want to go to VLAN 5, go that way. So this person here can communicate with this person here. 802.1Q is the standard protocol for the VLAN tag information and tag format. Uh, this is example of VLAN 10, Ethernet frame with VLAN 10 tag. And this is example of VLAN 20 tag. It's just an, uh, let's say it's identifier, identifier for the frame itself. So the switch, when he receives the frame, he knows that this is belongs to VLAN 20 and this is belongs to VLAN 10. Well, sometimes I called it stamp because you are stamping the traffic with the VLAN number. Okay. Well, this explains the access port and the trunk port. And as we mentioned, the access port can only belong to one VLAN. So, for example, we will go for um, switch one, and we would say for ports gig, let's say one one, and we will say switch port mode access, and for ports gig let's say um gig one two switch port mode trunk so if this port is gig one one so the command is easy switch port which is this port its mode is access and let's say this is gig one two so for that port, it is trunk. So switch port mode trunk. Well, there should be negotiation here between those two switches because there are some vendors that are using different protocol, but the standard is 802.1Q protocol.
Okay, so access port belongs to only one VLAN, only one VLAN, but trunk port can carry more than VLAN. The frames it sends do not carry VLAN tag. Generally, it's used to connect the port of a computer, let's say CCTVs as well, let's say IP telephony as well, access points. Well, access points, this is bonus question. Access points, if you are connecting here access point, this port would be access port or trunk port. Well, considering you have multiple SSIDs here, SSID 1, SSID 2, and SSID 3, and each SSID in different IP segment. So would you choose that port as access port or trunk port? Well, the short answer is, as long as this link will carry more than VLAN, so the short answer is, it should be trunk port. So if you are connecting access point with different SSIDs, for your own uh, configuration. And each SSID on different subnet or different IP segment, you would choose that port as a trunk port. Because some scenarios, I faced it daily, the hospitality, especially in the hot rooms, uh, the switch is in rack, connected to each room with a cable. And uh, the IT administrator, connect the access point to that switch. And after the access point, if it has PoE pass through, like the one I showed you yesterday, this port would be connected to IP telephony as well and turn it on, IP telephony. So in this case, this port should be trunk because the Wi-Fi signal is in VLAN 5, and the IP telephony is in VLAN 6 because it cannot be the same VLAN, the Wi-Fi and the IP telephony. It's not recommended. So in this way, this port will be trunk port. Okay, Trunk port, it can allow multiple VLANs to pass through. The frame it sends are generally tagged with VLANs number and are generally used for ports connected between switches. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, this is the 802.1Q standard. You can add the tag field to the standard Ethernet frame, tag protocol identifier, uh, which is tag uh, protocol ID. And the tag contains the tag protocol ID 0x8100. This is uh, the tag protocol number. The priority is from 0 to 7. And the priority actually is 3 bits, indicating priority used for quality of service. And the VLAN ID, the VLAN ID here, it's a 12 bit indicating. VLAN ID available in the range of 1 to 1494 used to uniquely identify a VLAN. Canonical format indicator, canonical format indicator, which is one bit, including pass Ethernet, FDDI, and token ring. Well, all we care here is the VLAN ID and the 802.1Q tag. So if you are talking about uh, the VLAN number, you can put the VLANs that belongs to the trunk. So you can see Ethernet with the VLAN ID 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9, for example, for the trunk port. And this tag identifies each VLAN belongs to which port. Um, for the configuration, you will simply go for the VLAN and start selecting the port you want to uh, to be dedicated to a VLAN. Uh, 
The system only exists in VLAN 1 and cannot be deleted. Please note that uh, if you go into deploy VLAN, don't use VLAN 1 because the system uses VLAN 1. So the 192, the 168, the 110, the something, it uses VLAN 1. So uh, it's not recommended to use VLAN 1 and you cannot delete VLAN 1. So uh, if you want to configure, for example, uh, port 10, you will select the port or the select the VLAN and just uh, selecting if it's access port or trunk port. Uh, here's the VLAN ID and the description of the VLAN, the port that belongs to that VLAN. And this is the action if you want to edit or delete the VLAN. If you want to add a VLAN, you simply click Add. Well, let's try, uh, let's try some configuration of uh, ES. This, I'm, I'm now connecting my EG, my EG router, uh, EG210. I think you, you can see my screen, Kelvin. You can see my uh, Firefox, don't you? Yes, yes, I can see, bro. Okay. So let's go for the switch. This is ES. Unfortunately, I don't have NDS currently. This is ES205 TC-B. And that B belongs that it supports BOE. OK. Let's go for the devices, the switch. Click on that switch. Well. Um, as long as it's just a basic switch, it's not advanced switch, but let me go through this. Uh, as you can see, I'm connecting the port one here and the flow of that port is 291.56 meg. And this is for download and the upload is 94. It's gigabit Ethernet and the rate is 69 kilobit per second for download, 409 for the upload, and it's cover. As you can see, it's cover. And this one, can you see that little power here? This one means that I'm connecting to some kind of devices that getting BOE. So for that. That icons means it's PoE. And that icons means it's the uplink connected to whatever. If you are connecting to uh, another switch, maybe if you are connecting to EG, a router, and so on. Um, you can check the port statistics of each port. You can do cable diagnostics. And for example, if we click start, you can check the, uh, the switch ports cable if there is an error in some cables, right? I'm currently not connecting too much devices for the cable diagnostics, but this is for the cable diagnostics. Uh, this is the Mac list of the devices, um, of the current devices, which is connected. Um, let's do that again. It will take a time to, uh, to test the cable. And the flash is 10 on and 10 off again for the, uh, for the test. Let's go for the basic settings. You can check here the port settings. You can select the port, port one, for example, the states is enabled. The speed, like we mentioned, you can choose 10 meg, 100 meg, 1000 meg. And the negotiation, I, I do recommend to leave it as auto negotiation. And this is the PoE settings. I'm currently using the port two 
as a PoE. If we take off the port two, you can see that this PoE will be off. It is off. Let's turn it back on. You can also repower this uh, PoE port. So for some scenarios, like uh, you have that switch and you have far away camera, uh, and maybe it's a lag or something wrong with the camera itself. So you can just click on repower. It's kind of rebooting the camera, turn it on and turn it, turn it off, then turn it on again. So this is really nice feature. It, it saves you time. Uh, you can repower. Let's do some refresh here. Well, it's on. If you click repower, it turn off and turn on your end device again. Okay. Um, you can check here the port mirroring. If you need to do some diagnostics, if you want to mirror ports, for example, the source port is port one, is the direction is in and out or all, the direction is all and the destination port. So the destination port uh, for this monitoring port, if you want to monitor, uh, for example, this is our switch, we are connecting different ports. Let's say this is server, Okay, and let's say this is my PC, and this PC has a software, let's say Wireshark, and I need to capture this port and mirror it to that port. So simply, I will select the source port, which is I want to monitor, and the direction, well, it will be this port, port one, the source port, and the direction, do you want the incoming traffic or outgoing traffic or both? I need both, all. And the destination port is port two, because once it received here, I will take this analysis and do some diagnostics. So this is a nice feature if you need, if you need to do some uh, Wireshark analysis. Uh, this is if you need to reserve a static Mac for some devices. Uh, you just simply copy the Mac and start uh, using this Mac for your uh, ports, like port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4, and so on. Okay, let's go back to, uh, to our switch. Um, Okay. Okay, this is how you create the VLAN. The VLAN 22. Um, you simply click on add, and once you click on add, you're creating that VLAN. So add and add the VLAN number and the description of the VLAN. And then hit OK. Um, assign the new VLAN to ports, and you can select which ports to belong to which VLANs. This is the port list. And you can as well uh, use the patch edit. Um, for example, this is access port as a port mode, and this is belongs to VLAN 22. Uh, it's like a switch port mode access. And switch port access to what VLAN? To VLAN X or Y or Z. So this is simply a GUI if you need to do patch edit to some ports belonging to the same VLAN. Okay. So here we are patching those ports from 21 to 24. Uh, those ports 21 to 24 belongs to VLAN 22. So we have patched those four ports. And um, well, access control list application scenario. 
the uh, is there any question regarding the vlan or troubleshooting the vlan or configuring the vlan so far uh, as long as uh, you mr uh, vector have tried a lot of uh, uh, rej products so i think you have have you tried uh, the vlan or doing some configuration regarding vlan have you faced any issue um Please feel free if you have any issue. Uh, okay, for the access control list application, the complete basic VLAN and routing configuration on the access switch, aggregation switch, and core switches, and PCs in and outside the VLAN can communicate with each other. If you want to control the interaction of individual data without affecting the interaction with other data, you need to use access control list. So access control list is something like accept or deny. It's allowing traffic to go from X to Y or denying that traffic. Okay. So let's say the server belongs to VLAN, which is connected to the technology department. And as well, that server needs to communicate with the finance department. Um, so you don't need the technology department to talk to the finance department. And although you are using layer three switch here, although you are using layer three switch here, but you can use the access control list to deny this interaction. So this is denied, as you can see. And if you want to do the configuration of access control list, you open the security and click on access control list. You have the name of the access control list and the type, is it based on IP address uh, and the status and the action. Okay, IT access control list, it's based on IP address, or you can choose uh, if it's based on MAC address. Uh, you can edit the access control list of certain uh, department, and please note it's up to 512 access control list. Okay, this is the IT access control list and you can choose whether to allow or block the traffic. IP protocol number is all for TCP and UDP and maybe ICMP, that ping protocol, okay? And the source IP address, you can decide all the subnet or certain IP address and the destination IP address is all. So you are allowing the traffic with all protocols from that source to all destination. Okay. Um, and then you click save. This is the rule. The source IP is 192.168.110 or the subnet. The destination IP is all and the protocol number is all. You can as well bind the access control list to an interface uh, that is from security access control list and hit the access control list binding. The device only filters incoming packets for the binding access control list. It only filters incoming traffic, not outgoing traffic. Okay. Um, you can edit, as you can see here, we edit port 4, giga 4, and you can choose Mac-based access control list or IP-based access control list. And then you hit OK. Um, and that's it. After binding this gig 4, you are binding the access control list to that port, which is gig 4. Okay, the port isolation. The port isolation, we just mentioned that uh, users in the same VLAN, let me write this, 
better. Users in the same VLAN can communicate with each other. Okay? But users in different VLAN needs layer 3 to communicate with each other. Port isolation will enforce or let's say deny the traffic within the same VLAN. So if you are in the same VLAN, you are allowed to communicate with your uh, with your VLAN, but the port isolation will deny the traffic within the same VLAN. So port isolation achieves layer two isolation between packets. Different ports can be added to different VLANs, but limited VLAN resources will be wasted. With the port isolation feature, isolation between ports in the same VLAN can be achieved. Users only need to add ports to the isolation group to achieve layer two data isolation between ports in the isolation group. The port isolation function provides user with a safer and more flexible networking solution. So if you enable port isolation between port one and port three, even in the same VLAN, like I have mentioned, BC1 and BC3 cannot communicate normally. So if BC1 trying to ping or send traffic to BC3, if you are isolating this port from that port, this will be denied. They cannot communicate. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, BC1 cannot communicate with BC3. And the implementation and best practice, if you can see here, the port is in amber, is the port isolation enabled, and the port is in green, is the port isolation disabled. Please note, don't put the gateway as port isolation, because in that way, all your network will not have internet access. So avoid putting your uplink to the internet in a port isolation. So here, when ports on a switch have been isolated, the MS will not send any layer two network traffic from one isolated port to another because it will be denied. Uh, this can be useful in a multi-tenant environment, for example, where clients should be unable to send traffic to each other so this is will be useful and uh, maybe in some hotel rooms you can do port isolation for the uh, uh, when we explain the access point that gives poe to the ip telephony okay you can do port isolation in such scenario in the following two example diagrams the orange port includes isolated ports and the green ports have isolation disabled. The topology blue is an example of port isolation being used to block inter-client communication, even if they are in the same VLAN. Okay, but they still allowing internet access. Okay, so deny or avoid putting the uplink in isolation group. Um, when implementing port isolation, it's important to ensure that the appropriate ports have been isolated so that traffic can reach the appropriate destination. It should also be noted that ports that are not isolated can communicate with ports that are isolated. So in this example, switch A's uplink switch A's uplink, this uplink has been isolated. So clients connected to any other isolated port on A are unable to communicate with the gateway because the gateway is connected to B. 
So if you put those isolated link, so forget about those switches. So port isolation, please be careful when you do port isolation configuration. Um, <clears throat> As well, you collect on security and start doing port isolation and you're just enabling the port that you need the, 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 to be isolated. Okay. Um, Here we are isolating Giga Ethernet 3. So you just turn it on uh, and they give you pop up. Are you sure you want to enable port protection on port Giga Ethernet 3? Yes. And here you go. All right. Um, I don't want to go that much. Um, so I think that is enough for today. We can continue on, uh, on next week. If you guys are available on the on the next week, we can continue. <clears throat> I don't want to put uh, much more information in the same session. So, uh, if you have any questions so far for today's session, please go ahead. Uh, if you have any inquiry or if you have tested something and that something didn't work, you can email me at. Uh, at this email and i will support you immediately um does anyone have any question so far